Hey everybody, how's it going? And welcome back to my M Creator tutorial series where I teach you how to make a Minecraft mod with absolutely no coding at all. So, today we're going to be making a structure, like a shipwreck, or in this case, an airship. So let's do this. Okay, but before we get started, we're going to need to make something called a loot table. Or, in most cases, you will need to. Because... You know how shipwrecks and villages and stuff have randomized loot? Well, that's what we're going to be doing, because you don't want to have the same stuff every time. And the loot tables basically just say what kind of items you want to put in the chest, and then it'll be able to randomize it from there. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a new loot table, and we're going to call this the Ardanium Airship Loot Table, and that's because I'm going to be making an Ardanium Airship, so in this case we're gonna pick we're gonna be able to pick the name and we're gonna keep the name just like it is because that's what we already named it as well as the namespace we're gonna keep it mod and then the loot table type these are well the different types of loot table you have so entity you'll be able to make it drop those certain items whenever an entity dies chest is going to be a loot table for a chest which is in this case what we want to pick and fishing is going to be a loot table for when you're fishing. So we're going to pick chest. And here we are. So the minimum and maximum rolls is kind of the amount of different items that you're going to get in your loot table. So minimum is going to be like three. And then maximum is going to be like seven. Seems cool. Okay, now for the entries, we can add as many of these as we want. These are the different items that are going to spawn. So I'm going to add an Ardini Mingit. And the weight is how much it's going to spawn. So if you make this higher, there'll be more of it. And it'll get chosen more often in these three to seven rolls. So I'm going to set the maximum count to like four as well. So minimum, maximum count, it's a random, it chooses randomly in between those two numbers. And it'll choose kind of what, it'll choose how many of those items get put inside that stack. So we're going to add another two, because I've got two more ideas. This one is going to be an Ardanium Dust. I'm going to make this much less rare with four rather than one, so it should be four times more likely to get chosen. And we're going to set the max count to like 12. There we go. And this one is going to be fake Ardanium, so magenta die. And this is going to go on not the minimum count. The maximum count is going to go up to like mm, 18. There we go. And I'm also going to set this weight up to six. So this is our loot table. It's going to roll three times. And each time, it'll pick a number between these two numbers, and that's the amount it'll put in. So let's just save this up. And now we're actually going to go in-game, and we're going to be building our structure that we want to show up. Okay, so now that we're here in-game, I'm going to show you how to actually get the loot table into your inventory. So, go into the description, and right here is this command. Quite long, but right here is what we're worried about. This mod name, colon, loot table, registry name. So, the mod name is just the name of your mod. So it's the thing when you first made your mod, kind of what you called it. So in this case, I called it tutorial mod. And then the loot table registry name is the loot table registry name that we specified earlier. So in this case, this is our Danium airship loot table. And if you spelled it all right, and if all the information was correct, you get a chest and when you place it down, your loot table will be inside of it. So here we go, magenta dye, ardanium dust, and no ardanium ingots. But if we place another one, this time it's different. If we place another one, it's different again. And if we place another one, it's different again. If we place another one, it's different again. And as you keep placing them, all of them will be different. And I really just want to get an ardanium ingot. There, ardanium ingots in this one. So I'm going to actually keep this chest on me. And what we're going to do is we're going to now build the structure that we want to show up. Now, I recommend building it in the sky, whether you're building kind of a sky-based one or not, because when we're actually defining the structure and we're actually going to say, like, what the structure is, we don't want to accidentally get any ground blocks or else it ended up really weird. So I'm going to just set block stone, and there we go. We got a block, and I'm going to build off of this block, and I'm going to build my Ardanium airship that I want to build.
Okay, so this is what I came up with. Anyone who's ever built anything in their life is totally laughing at me right now. But it's what I came up with. This is what I made. So, I'm going to chuck down um, my chest. And make sure this is still the chest that you slash gave yourself. And if you, you know, got a different chest or accidentally lost it and middle clicked it to get it back again, that's not going to work. You have to make sure you give it back to yourself with that command. It has to be that exact one or else it won't work. And we're going to, I'm going to place mine right there. So what you're going to do now is you're going to type another command to give yourself a structure block. So that's give at s minecraft colon structure block. Just like that. And then you'll get a structure block. And this structure block basically will, um, this is what will let you copy your build here. So I'm going to go and you're going to place it underneath your build just outside of the boundaries. So if you can imagine a box around this whole building, we're gonna place it right at the bottom right corner of it, or bottom whatever corner, it doesn't matter. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click on it, and we're gonna click save mode right here. We're gonna come up with a structure name, so I'm gonna call this Ardanium Airship. And we're gonna hit done now, and Basically, now what we need to do is we need to see how many blocks out in each direction it goes. And we can mess with this structure size right here. And that's what's going to let us do it. So if we come over to this left box right here, you know, this is the X, Y, and Z. So basically, if I set this to like 10, 10, 10, and we hit OK, you actually see this big box here. And you want this box, we're going to mess with those values until the box covers your whole structure. Now obviously this is not right. This is nowhere near our structure. So you can't actually put negative values in here to move the box. That just breaks it. So what you want to do, if you want it to go the other way, is we're going to move this relative position. We do like 10. Well that moved it even further. That was even worse, but... We can do negative 10, and that puts it kind of in the right spot. You can see this edge is aligned with this edge, and that's good. Now this build comes out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So if I make this 5, oops, and then we'll do negative 5. Yeah, now these left and right edges are both lined up right against the edge of the block. Now we need to get this side right here because there's still a one block gap and this side because there's still a two block gap. So that would be seven then. And now we need to move it one more further this way. So that would be one. And there we go. So now the bottom's looking right too, but now we just need to do the top, which is two blocks too tall. So we'll just shrink this down to eight. And that's it. Now our entire structure is enclosed within this box. And you know, it doesn't matter if there's gaps right here, but you want it to match up with the widest point. Because otherwise you'll cut things off. And if it's too big, then you might end up with air blocks and stuff where you don't need them. So this is what we're looking at. It looks really good. Now we're going to come in here and just click this big save button over here. Not this one, but the save button. And you can see, saved as Minecraft Ardenium Airship. Now if we leave the world and go back in and you come down to this edit button right here when you click on your world you're gonna hit open world folder and this basically brings up your file manager and we're gonna go into the generated folder minecraft structures and right here ardanium airship and this is our structure but it's saved in a file and you can see it's a .nbt file which is exactly what we're looking for we're going to bring this now to another folder I'm just gonna put it in downloads put it right there and now we're going to come back into M Creator. So if we come over to our workspace here, once again, and we add a structure spawn. This is, you know, the structure that's actually going to spawn throughout our world. I'm going to give it a name. This is going to be the Ardanium Airship. And now, when it says structure to spawn, we're going to click this little plus button to add our structure. We're going to go to the folder that we copied it to. So in this case, downloads, once again, and just pick Ardanium Airship.mbt. Hit open. And there we go, Ardanium airship. Now the spawn probability, this is 
you know, how many you want to spawn per 1 million chunks, as it says. So, as you should know, a chunk is a 16 by 16 area of land that goes all the way from bedrock to the world limit. So, every 1 million chunks, which is a 1,000 by 1,000 chunk area, how many of these do you want to have? So, 10,000, I think, is a little too much. This should be pretty rare. Let's make it 1,000. That means that every 1,000 chunks will have one. That's probably about right, but it's hard to see. Structure group size, this is like if you want a lot of them to spawn kind of grouped together, sort of like a village, we can make this higher, minimum and then maximum. I'm going to keep this at one because I only want I want them to spawn by themselves. We can also randomize the rotation. If you turn this off, it's always going to be facing the same way that you made it face. Like, for example, if the sail on mine, I don't know what it was facing, but if it was facing north and you didn't randomize the structure rotation, then the cell would always face north, no matter what. But in this case, we're going to randomize the rotation so it will spin around. And then blocks to ignore in placing. We're good keeping this on structure block. This type of reference ground detection, the motion blocking block will basically make it able to spawn inside of stuff like grass, because the grass doesn't block motion, because you can walk right through it. And if you just do first block, then if it wants to spawn on the tall grass, they'll spawn on top of it instead, which is usually not what you want. So we're going to keep it like that, but ours doesn't even spawn on the ground. This spawn locations, as you can see, if you want to spawn in the nether, you use underground. But you can make it spawn underground, which is like a dungeon, or you can make it spawn in the air, which is what we're going to do, or just on the ground, like normal. But I'm going to make mine spawn in the air, because it is an airship. This X, Y, and Z offsets, we can keep it like that. And then spawn world types, this is basically where you want to spawn. So if you add it, surface is the overworld, and you have nether and end. So if you want to spawn there, you can add those, but I'm going to keep it just in the overworld. Okay, now we have restrict to block types. This is basically what blocks it'll spawn on top of. In this case, we're just spawning it on air, so we're going to leave it. No restriction. And then biome types, you can make it only spawn in a certain biome, which I don't want. I want to spawn anywhere. And then we also have these two procedures. So we're going to hit save, just like that. And honestly, that's it. Once it finishes building up our mod, we're going to fire up Minecraft. Okay, so now what we're going to do is we're going to make a new world to generate all our structures in. So we're going to call this structure test. You don't really need to do this as long as you generate new chunks, but I'm just going to create a whole new world and I'm going to start flying around. It should be pretty rare because it's only spawning one in every thousand chunks. So it's probably going to be pretty rare, but I'm going to look for it and see if I can find one. Aha, there it is. Found one. This is airship. And as you can see, the loot table we didn't check it, but if I find another one, the loot table will be different. And yeah, this is the this is the airship that we made. And it's generated naturally in the world. And as you can see, it spawned in the sky. There's another one up there. Wow. So we can compare right now the stuff in the chests. This one looks like this. And if we fly up here, all the way up, this chest is much different. So yeah, this is how you make very own structures in Minecraft. So thanks everybody for watching this video. I hope you have fun making something much better than I can ever make. There's another one over there in the distance. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye.